That's not the duty in any criminal trial and will not be our duty here in this. What we simply say is that there is too little hard evidence to come to a firm conclusion even on a balance of probabilities. That is to say, even twisting the scale and onus of proof which is required, degree of proof which is required in our courts, to match the circumstances that we face here, seeking to mount a trial some 500 years after the events themselves took place. Now, having said that, I'll go straight into calling the evidence. Calling, first of all, Lady Wedgwood, please. <coughs> <clears throat> Your Lordship has, I hope, and the jury has, I hope, as well, a bundle of, uh, which is marked in a little brown envelope. Yes, Photo portraits. Packet three, portraits. It's not very easy to get the contents out. But when you have, you will find on the top what appears in the photograph to be a line drawing, uh, which this witness will be referring to. Yeah. Uh, Lady Wedgwood, uh, you're a fellow of the Society of Anti Antiquaries um, and principally, apart from lecturing and writing extensively on your subject, which is that of an art historian, I think. Medieval art historian. Yeah. Specialising in the medieval period, was responsible for mounting the exhibition of Richard III in the National Portrait Gallery in 1973. That is correct. I think then did you assemble almost all the known portraits of Richard III, although curiously enough, even some more have come to light since then. Indeed. Uh, I, I had note then of over 20, and the total is rising towards 30, and the others may yet emerge. Uh, I think included in the exhibition were many letters and manuscripts, some in Richard III's own hand, yes. and many artefacts of the period and of the personalities that we're concerned with. Indeed. Uh, I would like to read to you, if I may, from my old edition of Sir Thomas More, uh, his description of Richard III, which is passed down into posterity. Uh, starting off by saying that he's less than Edward, who preceded him uh, as king, goes on to say, little of stature, ill-featured of limbs, crook-backed, means hump-backed, his left shoulder much higher than his right, hard-favoured of visage, and such as in the States called Worley. I'm not quite sure what Worley means, but it's clearly not a compliment by the sound of it. Now, first of all, is that supported by the contemporary paintings or the contemporary accounts? Little of stature, crook-backed and hard. Ill-featured of limbs. Ill-featured of limbs. Moore goes on later to say he'd got a withered arm. Any truth in that? There is no contemporary evidence that he had a withered arm from any okay. visual uh, sources. Uh, that he was considerably shorter than his brother, Edward, and yes. of quite a different cast of feature, could very well be demonstrated. Crook-backed, hump-backed? The first record of that is a written one, <coughs> or where it is accepted that there was uh, some uh, disparity in shoulders. Ah, that's a different kettle of fish. Many of us have got one shoulder slightly higher than the other, or one slightly larger than the other, but hump-backed. That is, I claim, an exaggeration then can I ask you to look at the contemporary portraits? Is that the first that we have uh, the in the bundle before the jury? The image, uh, which you have, uh, the black and white one, like this, uh, is the one definite image of Richard made during his reign, almost certainly drawn by somebody who had seen him. And the figure in question is this one. That is the third in on the second row. This is the genealogical tree of his wife, Anne Neville. Uh, the second that we've got is an enlargement of the three to which you have drawn attention. 
Richard being on the right-hand side, I think. Indeed. Again, any evidence there of deformity? Certainly at all? not. Nothing of the kind is conveyed, though the short face, perhaps, which is a contrast to his brother, could be Then I'm going out. to turn to number three, which is a coloured print, and in fact a picture which is in the possession of your society. The Society of Antiquities. Now, so far as is known, is that a faithful portrait of Richard as he appeared in life prior to his death on Bosworth Field? It is completely compatible with the face you have already seen in the contemporary drawing. This painting, which suggests no deformity or exaggeration of any kind, is probably the earliest known copy of a lost original. It was in the past in the family until the 18th century. It shows no deformity and nothing special at all. Well, then I'm going to go on to number four, if I may. This is a portrait taken from the Royal Collection at Windsor. Is it possible to demonstrate that the right shoulder, in fact, has been lifted? Uh, this is the case, Mr. Dillon. In fact, the last link of the chain of his collar is painted in a different hand, uh, more clumsy than the other, and the uppermost part of the painting of his shoulder line is exaggerated. This is slightly cut. The picture should be wider. The point would be plainer, if it were. There is a little bit of uh, alteration there, which has made the point of a, of a very definitely different shoulder. This one slopes down. You mean by examination, by x-ray, you can show paint added at a different period? Yes. The original yes. Uh, shoulder line, my lord, runs there. I see. There's been a deliberate alteration there to the been. right shoulder. And it is also suggested that the eyes have been made more narrow. Uh, the face looks to be a good deal more line, too, in this and subsequent portraits we're going to look at than the original. Indeed. He was only in his early 30s when he died. 31 at the time of the accession to the throne. Well, then, there's a group of others because one passes on to copies of copies of copies, of copies. does one not? And Each the one. next three, four that the jury have got in their bundle simply continue to reproduce the errors which one has seen, question mark, deliberate errors that one has seen in the one to which you have now drawn attention. Indeed. They all depend from it. This is ex the Stafford collection, not before the 1550s. This one in the National Portrait Gallery, not before the 1590s. And this one, uh, Duke of Northumberland, probably 1600, maybe 1620. And the last one, the Duke of Leeds, now at Montacute, uh, 1600 to 1620 again. Well, now, I need not dwell upon those because the point is the same. It is. It is the distorted image which has been copied. <coughs> I think there is an outstanding example which we have not got copies in our bundles, but which you have got. Yes. It's the portrait of Richard with a broken sword. This is, you might say, an independent witness, evidently the same face, but clearly a propaganda picture. Could you hold it for one moment so his lordship can see, and my friend? Oh, yes. Uh, you. There you will see he's holding a broken sword. That in itself uh, suggests that uh, it was clearly posthumous. But if you look... At, uh, at an image uh, examining it, you will see that it has been altered in itself. Now, what you're holding <coughs> is now a black and white portrait. This is the infrared photograph of it, where you can see there have been two alterations. It was originally painted with a very exaggerated left shoulder. This was Can I stop you there? Yes. Does that give the appearance of a humpback? Indeed. Sir, the other shoulder is somewhere down it's here. It's been dropped. Could you look, point it in my direction for one Sorry, moment? Sorry, my lord. Oh, yes. Yes, I see. Thank this you. This very considerable exaggeration here, very low shoulder there. Yes. But that has been altered to make it more normal. It was originally painted, my lord, with a very deformed left arm of which the cuff came to here and the line went there. Now, uh, that's to give the appearance of the withered left arm. Weirish. Now, could you hold that round to point to the jury, please? You will see. So they the